Hello, 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 and welcome. Hey, today, Jen and I are talking about how an Ot Baniel method, neuro movement, can help children with spastic cerebral palsy and specifically reduce spasticity in their arm. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's one of the most common questions that I get asked is, how can I fix my child's arm? How can I help my child's hand grab things better. So that's kind of the general questions that I often get asked. I'm sure you do too. So I've got lots of thoughts on this, but first we should go over how does this even help? <laughs> how does the Anat Benyel method even help spasticity? Yeah, we should maybe start with the sort of fundamentals to get everyone on board about how ABM, Anat Benyel method, interacts with your nervous system and your understanding of self to bring about changes in your brain, which bring about learning. And you just hit the nail on the head. It's a shifting from trying to fix a muscle, a thing, to thinking about spasticity as a whole body and something to do with the nervous system and the brain. Yeah, because it looks like it's the arm that's having the problem, but actually it's a problem in the brain. It's from the injury that your child sustained from whatever happened to them. Maybe it was a birth injury. Maybe they had an accident and they had a brain injury. And they've now got this arm that's tight. And if you could only just pull it, they, you have this feeling that if you could just physically pull it, it would loosen and become a, a regular kind of arm. But the problem isn't the arm. The problem is the communication between your brain, their brain, and the arm. Yeah. Can you say more about that, Jen? Jen? Yeah, no, you nailed it. Exactly. People are used to, our culture is used to thinking of our, we can just fix body parts and everything will be fine. And fixing body parts, like having a stronger muscle somewhere or having a stretched muscle somewhere uh, is helpful. But unless your brain can coordinate those muscles, then it's really about how well does your child's brain coordinate all of their muscles. And coordination of muscles is like a dance between contraction and release and contraction and release. And that's what the Annette Benyel method helps is helps the brain reorganize that contraction and release in functional movement. Exactly. So fundamentally, we are not a mechanical system. I wish sometimes. But I know. Wouldn't it be great if you could just go in there, add a little oil, tighten a little screw, whatever. But we are an information system. And we are powered by the information system that is our brain and our nervous system. Mm -hmm. So we have to approach the problem not really a problem, but we have to approach the thing that we want to fix in a very different way than we would a broken leg of a chair. Or, you know, if somehow your kettle wasn't working and you realized it was the plug, then to just go in there, change the wiring and plug it back in and you're going to get hot water. But this is not the way the human body and the human system works. We have to come at it from a fundamentally different way. That's right. There has to be a conversation with the nervous system or it's you're not going to get the result that you want. So how do we approach it? How do we start to access the power of the brain to make new connections so that the information of I'm moving my arm doesn't end up just automatically clenching the arm or the information of like, oh, relax the musculature so that it releases. Does it, how do we get it so that it, it starts to get that message instead of tightening? Definitely one way to access the brain's ability to better organize the contraction and release is to one, go really slow, <laughs> slow yourself down. Yeah, which is really hard because your child is probably going really fast. Uh, most children have very fast movements, no matter whether they're, they have a brain injury or they don't, they just end up doing things very quickly. And so our, our inclination is to also do things very quickly. And we as adults and as caregivers, parents, therapists, uh, other caring adults have grooved in our patterns so well that we can go quickly. Most of us adults can brush our teeth really quickly or tie our shoe really quickly. Yeah. And, and because we do it quickly and we do it well, we think, oh, if you do it quickly, you will do it well. We, we correlate those two things and they, they don't necessarily, not true necessarily. I think that's one important thing that parent, us parents, I'm a parent that has done this to my child that we fall into to not help our child's brain and connect to their nervous system and reorganize things is actually to override their nervous system uh, with something faster or stronger or 
override their nervous system with my own intention. Like, come on, why can't you grab and reach that? It's so easy. It, you've done it before, maybe. Um, why can't you just do it again? And that's putting my, as a parent, intention on and pressure onto the child. And that is not good for a learning nervous system. Like your nervous system just shuts down with that type of pressure. Yeah. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody's giving you like 10 instructions in a row and they're saying them very quickly, maybe like telling you that all of the ingredients of a recipe and then the first four steps of how to do the recipe and, and you've never made beef stroganoff before or something like that. And this is all new information to you. You've never worked with these ingredients before. You've never worked them with them in this way. And they're just like plowing you with with a, a tremendous amount of information you're like wait a second that's uh, it's going too fast it's, it's like beyond my capacity to to grasp and then you, then you think about your child who is in the process of learning things for the very first time and how they need to slow down to even notice what the ingredients are Mm -hmm. This movement of letting go seems very intuitive and everybody should know it. But for a lot of children with a brain injury, cere cerebral palsy, that's, it's not intuitive. They're stuck. Their brain is sending the signal to contract, contract, contract. And that's what they know. So they are literally learning a new movement to let go. That's a new movement for them. So then after going slowly, what else can you do to wake up your child's brain to start noticing this new movement of reducing spasticity and moving the arm in such a way that is smooth and different than the way that they already know how to move their arm. Yeah. I actually, in my own practice, use three step method that I often teach parents inside my online classes. Do you want to know what those three steps are, Phoebe? I want to know what your three steps are. <laughs> and you can see if you agree with them, because as ABM practitioners, we all have different ways to approach kids and ways to work with kids. And Anat gave us nine wonderful essentials to tap into and access the brain's potential. Um, and these, you might notice some are in my three steps, but my first step is always whenever there's a child with any type of spasticity, including the arm, I always observe what they're doing. So how has their unique brain organized their unique body? So observe what what is your child already doing? That is their baseline, their nervous system baseline of how their brain has organized their body. And you have to respect their baseline. If you come in as an outsider and yank or pull or try to adjust their baseline, right away, you're kind of fighting their nervous system, right? And we want to join their nervous system and give them new information, not override their ner nervous system. So step one is always observe what your child is already doing. So how is, has their brain organized their body? And then the second step is to hold and support what they're already doing. Their brain is sending the signal to, I'm just using the arm as an example, to, to contract, contract, contract. Maybe it's in this way, it might be in a different way. So you have to observe your child and then support. How has their brain organized their arm? And then with your gentle, soft, safe, supportive hands, support what they're already doing, and then gently release. And often that release is this huge nervous system sigh over their whole body, and they'll actually let go a little bit more and a little bit more. And then the third step is to add in little bits of variation after you've started to get that release. But that's a whole nother topic of variation. So I have an idea that we could just try right now. And that is to experience exactly your three steps in yourself. Yeah. So right now, I'm observing myself and I'm noticing that my shoulders feel tight. Now you might notice I, I was like, oh, where should I put my hands? I've got a desk right here. Should I put my hands on my desk? Should I put my hands in my, my pockets? Where, where should I put my hands? And my shoulders are tight. So if we follow the steps that Jen just laid out, first of all, we observe what's happening, right? I'm standing up. Where do I feel tension? I feel it in my shoulders. Now, what if I supported that tension just a little bit, that little spasticity in my shoulders? I feel it right here and I feel it right here. What if I held that a little bit, a little bit more than it's that it's already feeling like crunchy up, right? So if I just go up just a little bit and hold it, not this, right? Just just the tiniest little bit up and just like lovingly support my shoulders and then let it go. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. My like. I just feel so much better. I feel like supported by myself. 
and I realized that I was holding there and they didn't register it. Yeah. And, and there are other ways for me to be. And this is it. I can be like this. I can have lower shoulders. I can be freer in other movements as well. Yeah. That's the trick. Once your brain is able to let go of the chronic contractions, all of a sudden it frees up real estate in the brain to explore new movements and how to organize your body different. Yeah. So that really <laughs> is the basic. And most people jump into the end result. Like they see a specificity and they want it to just be the end result. And you miss all of these wonderful steps. Yeah. Yeah. The awesome thing is that like, it's not just, it's like when you have that real estate, I love that idea, the real estate in your brain to like have new, new things filling in your brain. You might observe your child doing new things, like totally unrelated to, to the arm, right? And maybe it's going to be speech. Maybe it's going to be some kind of management of emotions or maybe it's going to be something to do with the relationship of the pelvis and the head oh i don't know we can't uh, we can't make a linear connection between one change and another which is also a fundamental difference about a not funny all method neuro movement is that we it's a non-linear method because humans are non-linear yeah. Your life experience, Phoebe, is very different than my life experience. And I guarantee you, your child's life experience is very different than your experience. And by life experience, I mean, things that have externally happened to them, but also what are they feeling through this world? Your child is feeling the world very, very differently than you are, right? We all feel the world very differently. I think that maybe that's enough for now. Because we can just dive more and more and more into this subject and we could keep giving you more and more information and we could go faster and faster and faster. But you wouldn't be able to grasp it all. No. We take tiny little steps to make huge differences. Yeah. And these three steps that Jen has just outlined are like gold. I tell you, they're like gold. We would love to hear if you implement them because yeah. that's what we want to hear is how you are taking the information that you're getting from this video, applying it to your real life situation. And if you have any questions, we want to hear about those too, so we can address it in future videos just like this. So we would love to hear for how you use this at home for sure, because learning doesn't just happen in a one or two hour office session once a week. I'm always saying this, you really can use these three steps, these and Nat Benyel's nine essentials right at home. And you can create changes in how your child's brain reorganizes itself at home. It doesn't have to be super complex and it doesn't have to take a lot of time and it doesn't have to be really hard. You really can create changes. You just exploring how you held your shoulders up in a safe, loving, supportive way and your brain was able to release that little bit of tension. How good did that feel? How can it change your life just walking around with this new freedom in your shoulders um, that can be translated to your child to unlimited possibilities awesome it's just awesome it in is the awesome. true sense of the word all of the awe <laughs> all right so thank you so much for joining us here if you did notice a difference in your shoulders or if you went out and tried this with your child at home we would love to hear about it and ask any questions you have down below don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos just like this and we will see you in the next video okay bye how many times can i say necessarily in one necessary sentence sometimes it's necessary sometimes it's just necessary <laughs>